In this Dragon's Dogma 2 video, we're going to be talking about one of my favorite things about Dragon's Dogma, and probably one of the most criminally underrated things about the game, and that is character creation. IGN showed a little bit about the character creator in Dragon's Dogma 2 a little over a month ago, and it looks to be very similar to the character creator of Dragon's Dogma 1 in terms of the customization options available to you. Now, obviously, the graphics of the game have gotten a facelift. It looks a lot prettier. Dragon's Dogma is over 10 years old, so you should expect this, blah, blah, blah. Not a big surprise there. But the detail and customization, the amount of it that you can do is still absolutely staggering. And Dragon's Dogma has a character creator that rivals some of the best character creators in RPG gaming because of the amount of freedom that you have when customizing your character. One new addition that IGN did show was the addition of a race called the Beastrin, which are like cat-like humanoids that you'll be able to choose from when making your character. And it seems currently that only human and Beastrin are available. I don't think this is going to change between now and then. It's possible there will be other races. I don't want to rule it out entirely. But from so far from what we've seen, it looks like human and Beastrin will be your options during character creation. But in my opinion, besides the level of detail that you can get, which is absolutely staggering, there are a few more things that I want to talk to you about about character creation that were present in Dragon's Dogma 1 that I'm really hopeful are part of Dragon's Dogma 2 and make it into the game. And these are things that I don't think a lot of people know about unless they played Dragon's Dogma 1. So if you remember when you played Dragon's Dogma 1, you could change the height of your character, the weight of your character, you know, how ripped you were, how non-ripped you were, you know, a lot of different features of the character, facial expressions, etc. But there are some tangible effects in Dragon's Dogma 1 of those decisions. And if they carry over to Dragon's Dogma 2, it only makes character creation that much more interesting. And it's something that I've not really seen in too many other RPGs that really makes Dragon's Dogma unique. So for starters, the lighter your character in Dragon's Dogma 1, the faster you recover stamina. So if you make a heavier character or a larger character, Odds are they're going to be heavier, so your stamina speed will recover slower if you make a bigger character and faster if you make a smaller character. So that's something to consider. Like if you want to play like a speedy rogue or something like that, that uses a lot of fast attacks that, you know, consume a lot of stamina quickly, or maybe you're climbing on monsters a lot and you need a lot of stamina, maybe making a smaller character would be better for you. And the next thing to consider during character creation is that lighter characters consume more stamina than heavy characters doing the same actions. So even though their stamina recovery will be faster, They'll use more stamina to do it. So you might want to factor that in as well. Is it, you know, a case of where you want to have a lot of stamina at the beginning and not go through it as quickly, or you want to go through it a little bit more quickly, but you you want to recover it more quickly? Or do you want to have a character that's in the middle somewhere that's not the heaviest and not the lightest, so you're somewhere in the middle for both of these things? Additionally, climbing speed is affected by your weight. Lighter characters climb faster on monsters than heavier characters. So again, if you're a character that likes to, you know, get up on monsters, climb onto them, and attack them while holding onto them, having a smaller character might be better for you than having a larger character, so you'd have to factor that in as well. Another thing impacted by the weight of your character is knockback resistance. Characters that are lighter have less resistance to being knocked backward than heavier characters. So if you're making a tank, someone who's getting in there in the front lines, probably want to make a larger character so that they don't get knocked backward as much. Or maybe if you're making a melee character, someone that's fighting on the front lines that maybe isn't a tank, still might want to consider making them larger so they don't get knocked back as easily. And then the last thing about weight is that the maximum encumbrance of your character is directly affected by your weight. Lighter characters can't carry as much as heavier characters. Obviously, you know, if you have a stronger person, they can carry more than a person who isn't as strong. And generally speaking, that has a lot to do with body mass. So this is affecting, you know, how much you can carry in the game. So if you want to make a character that can pack a lot of stuff around, or that's important to you, or important aspect to you, you might want to make a larger character rather than a lighter character. And again, you can always make a character in the middle that does, you know, it's not light, but it doesn't carry a lot of stuff if you prefer. So moving on from that, we're going to talk a bit a little bit about what height affects in this game. And again, keep in mind that this is based on Dragon's Dogma 1. We do not know for sure that this is happening in Dragon's Dogma 2. We can only suppose that it is or hope that it is. But something to keep in mind is that if this is present in Dragon's Dogma 2, you're going to want to know these things. And your height directly affects the total body weight of your character. So all those things we just mentioned about body weight are affected by your height. So if you have a taller character, they're going to have more body weight, which will impact the things that I just mentioned. And if you have a shorter character, they'll have less total body weight impacting the things we just mentioned. 
Additionally, shorter characters are slower than taller characters when it comes to walking and running. They have shorter legs, they don't move as quickly, so if you have a character that's taller, they're going to be able to close distances faster, which makes sense from a physics standpoint. So if you want a character that moves faster in combat, you're going to have to make sure that you have a taller character, or you know, when you're out on the landscape and you run a run faster, taller will benefit you there. Keep in mind, though, that you will regenerate you know, your stamina more slowly if you have a much taller character, so you might be able to sprint across longer distances, but then maybe you have to wait longer for your stamina to come back. Another thing to take into consideration about the height is that it's easier for you to get the drenched debuff if you're a shorter character rather than a taller character, meaning that, you know, theoretically, if you were standing in some water, you know, if you're taller, less of you is going to be covered in that water. That's the obviously the, the design behind that. And the drenched debuff makes it so that you take more damage from lightning and ice spells in the game. So it's not super relevant all of the time in Dragon's Dogma, but it is something to consider that you will, you know, be at a bit of a disadvantage if you have a shorter character in some places in the game. And then lastly, there are, in Dragon's Dogma 1, goblin holes that shorter characters can get into while taller characters cannot. So there is the opposite advantage here of being shorter, that you can get into certain places in the game that you can't if you are a taller character. So these are all things besides how you want your character to look, how you want your character to sound, that you need to factor in when creating your character during Dragon's Dogma 1 that theoretically may also be present in Dragon's Dogma 2. And if they are, these are things that are good for you to know. There is a Dragon's Dogma 2 showcase coming up in just like a day or two that's probably going to shed some more light on this in general, and you can expect to see more Dragon's Dogma 2 coverage coming from us over the next month as we ramp up to the Dragon's Dogma 2 launch, so stay tuned for that. And obviously, if this changes between now and then, we will mention that in the video. We obviously do not know for sure if these things will be in the game, but I find it absolutely incredible that a game that's 10 years old had these mechanics with such an in-depth character creator, and I really, really hope that they're in Dragon's Dogma 2. So for those of you out there who have played Dragon's Dogma, what do you make of this? Do you think that these will be in Dragon's Dogma 2? Would you be disappointed if they weren't? I really feel like it's one of the things that makes Dragon's Dogma so special. There are many things, but it's one of those parts that makes up the experience of Dragon's Dogma. And if it wasn't present, I don't know if it would feel the same. So do you think Capcom will have dialed this back? You know, considering the trend of gaming is to become more accessible, do you think this is something they'll have eliminated so players can make the character that they want based on appearance and it doesn't affect their gameplay in any way? Or do you think they'll keep this in there and make it something that, you know, is still remains part of Dragon's Dogma? And for those of you out there who haven't played Dragon's Dogma, what do you think? Is this something you would like to have in your RPG? Or you'd prefer to just make your character look the way you want and not have to worry about these things? Let us know in the comments below. Oh, 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 oh,